So, we have considered the density of the multivariate normal distribution in the previous uh, class. Uh, now, if we are doing random sampling from multivariate normal distribution, then we want to do the estimation of parameters or we want to do the tests on the parameters. So, in general inferences on the parameters of a multivariate normal distribution. Firstly, I will discuss the estimation part here. So, let us consider say random sample from a multivariate normal population. So, <coughs> we can consider say u 1, u 2, u n let me use this notation. So, these are independent and identically distributed n p mu sigma random variables. So, that means these are the observations from a multivariate p variate normal distribution. So, we have basically expectation of each u i that is equal to mu and the dispersion matrix of u i is equal to sigma for i is equal to 1 to n. So, clearly we can see that if I define u bar is equal to 1 by n sigma u i, i is equal to 1 to n, then expectation of u bar that will be equal to mu. So, an unbiased estimator for mu is the sample mean. sample mean vector. Similarly, we can consider say 1 by n minus 1 s that is equal to 1 by n minus 1 sigma u i minus u bar into u i minus u bar transpose i is equal to 1 to n. This is unbiased for sigma. Let me give the interpretation of uh, this here. Let us consider the sample in this fashion u 1, u 2, u n. I will write it in this fashion. The components of this is u 1 1, u 2 1 and so on u p 1. Similarly, the components of u 2 are u 1 2, u 2 2, u p 2 and the components of u n are u 1 n, u 2 n and so on u p n. Let us consider say I consider this row vectors as y 1 prime, y 2 prime, y n prime. And this entire matrix we can use the notation say u transpose which is of order p by n. So, we can consider say for example, y i prime represents a random sample on the ith component that is n mu i sigma i square. Now, let us also use the notation u i minus u bar that is equal to u 1 i minus u 1 bar and so on u p i minus u p bar. Here individual u i bars are denoting 1 by n sigma u i j, j is equal to 1 to n. Therefore, this term that is 1 by n minus 1 sigma u i minus u bar into u i minus u bar transpose that will represent. So, we can write it here 1 by n minus 1 
सिग्मा यू आई माइनस यू बार इंटू यू आई माइनस यू बार ट्रांसपोज दिस विल रिप्रेजेंट वन बाई एन माइनस वन द फर्स्ट कंपोनेंट विल बी सिग्मा यू वन आई माइनस यू वन बार फ्रॉम हियर वी कैन राइट हियर बिकॉज इफ आई एम कंसिडरिंग दिस मल्टीप्लाइड बाई द ट्रांसपोज ऑफ दिस देन द फर्स्ट टर्म विल बिकम सिग्मा यू वन आई माइनस यू वन बार स्क्वायर सिमिलरली इन द सेकेंड डायगनल इट विल बिकम सिग्मा यू टू आई माइनस यू टू बार स्क्वायर एंड इन द हाफ डायगनल इट विल बिकम सिग्मा यू वन आई माइनस यू वन बार इन टू यू टू आई माइनस यू टू बार एटसेट्रा हियर इट विल बी सिग्मा यू टू आई माइनस यू टू बार स्क्वायर एंड सो ऑन सिग्मा यू पी आई माइनस यू पी बार स्क्वायर नाउ यू कैन सी दैट वन बाई एन माइनस वन वन बाई एन माइनस वन सिग्मा यू वन आई माइनस यू वन बार स्क्वायर दिस इज अनबायस्ड फॉर सिग्मा वन स्क्वायर एंड सो ऑन वन बाई एन माइनस वन सिग्मा u1 i minus u1 bar into u2 i minus u2 bar this is unbiased for sigma 1 2 etc so s by n minus 1 is unbiased for so we are able to consider the unbiased estimation for mu and sigma uh, we had the concept of minimum variance and bias estimation in the case of uh, a, a scalar parameter since we are dealing with the vector parameter here that concept is no longer valid here of course we can consider component wise minimum variance and bias estimation here now in the case of one variable we have seen the like for example in normal mu sigma square we have also looked at the maximum likelihood estimators in the one dimensional case the maximum likelihood estimator for mu was the sample mean and for the sigma square it was 1 by n sigma xi minus x bar square so here we can consider analog to that and we will get here we have defined s so for uh, the variance covariance matrix sigma we will get s by n and for mu we will get u bar let us prove this here so maximum likelihood estimation of parameters of a multivariate normal distribution so as before we have u1 u2 un is a random sample from normal np mu sigma now let us go back to the density function of ui yesterday we have seen the density function of the multivariate normal distribution when the rank of sigma is full it is given by 1 by 2 pi to the power p by 2 determinant of sigma to the power half e to the power minus half x minus mu prime sigma inverse x minus mu now we write this density for u1 u2 un so the likelihood function the likelihood function that is we write l mu sigma and then of course your u1 u2 un uh, i continue using capital letters here just for convenience so it will become determinant of sigma to the power minus n by 2 <coughs> 2 pi to the power n p by 2 e to the power minus 1 by 2 sigma ui minus mu prime sigma inverse ui minus mu i is equal to 1 to n <coughs> so 
firstly let us simplify this expression sigma u i minus mu transpose sigma inverse u i minus mu. Here we add and subtract sample mean vector. So, this becomes sigma i is equal to 1 to n u i minus u bar plus u bar minus mu prime sigma inverse and we expand this. So, sigma u i minus u bar prime sigma inverse u i minus u bar plus n times u bar minus mu prime sigma inverse u bar minus mu plus twice sigma u i minus u bar prime sigma inverse u bar minus mu i is equal to 1 to n. Now, if I consider here summation and apply on this I get u bar minus u bar. So, this term is actually 0 this term vanishes. So, we are getting only this part here. <coughs> so, we can rewrite the likelihood function as L mu sigma that is equal to determinant of sigma to the power minus n by 2 divided by 2 pi to the power n p by 2 e to the power minus 1 by 2. Now, if you look at this term this is actually scalar. So, if it is a scalar term I can also write it as trace of this. Now, trace of this can also be written as trace of this I interchange the order here I multiply it on this side. So, let me write it here it is equal to sigma u i minus sorry this is sigma u i minus u bar prime sigma inverse u i minus u bar minus half n u bar minus mu bar prime sigma inverse u bar minus mu bar. Okay. Now, this term I write as e to the power minus half trace of sigma u i minus u bar prime sigma inverse u i minus u bar. Now, in the trace, so this will become summation here, I can take this summation outside. So, this will become determinant of sigma to the power minus n by 2 divided by 2 pi to the power n p by 2 e to the power minus 1 by 2 trace of sigma inverse u i minus u bar u i minus u bar transpose minus n by 2 u bar minus mu sigma inverse u minus mu. Now, I take this summation sign inside then this will become summation here that is becoming s here. So, this is determinant of sigma to the power minus n by 2 2 pi to the power n p by 2 e to the power minus half trace of sigma inverse s e to the power minus n by 2 u bar minus mu prime sigma inverse u bar minus mu. Now, we want to maximize this with respect to mu. Let us consider firstly the maximization with respect to mu. We first maximize with respect to mu. Now, there is no mu term appearing here. So, that means basically we have to minimize this term. So, 
that is we minimize u bar minus mu bar mu prime sigma inverse u bar minus mu now sigma and sigma inverse they are positive definite so u bar minus mu prime sigma inverse u minus mu is always greater than or equal to 0 with equality at mu head is equal to u bar so u bar is the maximum likelihood estimator of mu so if i have reduced the second term in the likelihood function to zero so my likelihood function is now reducing to this term alone so now let us consider the maximization of this with respect to sigma so now l mu sigma reduces to determinant of sigma to the power minus n by 2 divided by 2 pi to the power n p by 2 e to the power minus half trace of sigma inverse s and we want to maximize so let us consider maximization of log of l that is equal to minus n by 2 log of determinant of sigma minus half trace of sigma inverse s so this we want to maximize with respect to sigma so if i here actually you can see i can put plus here and then this will become minus so if i consider in terms of sigma inverse and we can denote denoting the terms of sigma inverse by say sigma i j if we differentiate log l with respect to sigma i j and equate to 0 we get sigma i j is equal to s i j by n now in order to prove that this is maximum likelihood estimator we should show that actually this is maximizing that means we must show that to prove that s by n actually maximizes log of l we must consider we must show that n log determinant sigma inverse minus half trace sigma inverse s is always greater than or equal to n log s by n inverse minus half trace of s inverse n s or you can say that this difference should be greater than or equal to 0. Now, this difference if you consider this is n log determinant of sigma inverse minus trace of uh, half I can remove here because in this term <coughs> 2 divided by 2 was here and here also divided by 2 was there. So, I can take it out. So, this I can remove and this term also I can remove. So, this will become trace of sigma inverse s minus n log so now it is uh, s by n inverse and here s inverse s will become i so i of p dimension so trace will become equal to p so the term will become p here minus and there is a n in the denominator so it will become n p and this will become plus here now this term we can write as 
एन टाइम्स लॉग ऑफ सिग्मा इनवर्स एस बाई एन डिटर्मिनेंट आई एम कंबाइनिंग दिस टर्म विद दिस माइनस ट्रेस ऑफ सिग्मा इनवर्स एस बाई एन आई एम टेकिंग आउट एन हियर प्लस पी दैट वी कैन राइट एज एन टाइम्स लॉग ऑफ नाउ हियर वी डू सम मैनिपुलेशन दिस सिग्मा इज एक्चुअली sigma inverse s so we can write it as sigma to the power minus half sigma to the power minus half s now determinant of ab is equal to determinant of ba now this type of breakup was allowed provided we assumed sigma to be a positive definite matrix that's why sigma inverse is existing it's a positive definite matrix we were having the decomposition and from that decomposition the inverse was also possible and then the half matrix was also allowed if we remember the calculations that we did in it in one of the uh, previous lectures so we will use that thing here so this i can write as log of determinant of sigma to the power minus half s sigma to the power minus half by n minus trace now in the trace also same argument can be used because trace of ab is also equal to trace of ba now this is equal to n times log of product of lambda i i is equal to 1 to n minus sigma lambda i i is equal to 1 to n <coughs> plus p here lambda 1 lambda 2 lambda p they are characteristic roots of sigma to the power minus half s sigma to the power minus half by n and uh, since this is uh, we are starting with a positive definite these are all positive now if we consider log of x minus x plus 1 this is always less than or equal to 0 if i take x is equal to 0 so if you look at this term this is always going to be less than or equal to zero so actually we wanted to prove that s by n maximizes so in the log l i substituted sigma is equal to s by n that is why i got n log s by n inverse minus trace of sigma inverse that was becoming s by n inverse s so i should show this is less than or equal to 0 not greater than or equal to 0 so this is what we are able to prove so s by n is maximum likelihood estimator of sigma also if we look at the likelihood function which is actually the joint density function form that we have written here so from here we can also conclude that u bar and s it is a sufficient statistics for this problem from an application of the factorization theorem on the joint pdf of u1 u2 un we conclude that u bar and s is sufficient so this fact will be further useful in the inference problems so let us summarize we have considered the multivariate normal distribution and we have discussed several properties of the multivariate normal distribution now uh, one or two important points that we saw was use of a non central chi square distribution 
because we have seen that the sum of squares of independent normal random variables is a central chi square. So, if we are considering normal distribution with some non zero mean and then if I consider the sum of squares then we will get a non central chi square. So, I will now introduce non central distributions they are extremely useful in the multivariate theory. So, let me start with the non central chi square and then gradually we will talk about non central t and non central f distributions also. So, we talk about non central chi square distribution. So, let us consider say x following normal mu 1 distribution. We have seen that if x follows normal 0 1 then y is equal to x square has a chi square 1 distribution. Now, if x is normal mu 1 then x minus mu square will be chi square 1, but what about x square itself. So, let us derive the distribution here. To derive the distribution we can consider we derive the distribution of y. So, let us consider the C d f of y. So, naturally this is going to be 0 if uh, y is less than 0. So, this is equal to modulus x less than or equal to root y if y is positive. So, let us consider this portion here. So, this is equal to probability of minus root y less than or equal to x less than or equal to root y. Now, that is equal to we transform it to standard normal then this is becoming z is less than or equal to root y minus mu and here minus here z follows normal 0 1. So, this in terms of capital phi function which is the CDF of a standard normal distribution we can write it as So, we have derived the cumulative distribution function of x square. So, we can also find out the probability density function So, derivative of capital phi will be small phi. See, let us revise the definitions this is small phi t denotes the p d f of standard normal distribution that is phi t is equal to 1 by root 2 pi e to the power minus t square by 2 and capital phi x that is nothing but the cumulative distribution function that is c d f of normal 0 1 distribution. So, if I differentiate capital phi I will get a small phi root y minus mu and I will get 1 by 2 root y and uh, here I will get there is a minus here and there will be a minus here. So, it will become plus 1 by 2 root y small phi of minus root y minus mu. This is for y greater than 0, it is 0 for y. So, of course, uh, equality at 0 we may include at uh, one of the points that does not make any difference here. Now, this we simplify, we can write it as 1 by 2 root y and 1 by root 2 pi will also come out and I will get e to the power minus half root y minus mu square plus 1 
e to the power minus 1 by 2 minus root y minus mu square. I am writing the part where the density is positive. In the 0 part, I am not writing here. Let us simplify this portion. So, this is becoming equal to 1 by 2 root 2 pi y and this term here I can write e to the power minus y by 2 minus mu square by 2 plus mu root y. Similarly, in the second part it will become minus y by 2 minus mu square by 2 and this one will give me the minus sign minus mu root y. So, this term I can keep outside it will become e to the power minus y by 2 minus mu square by 2 divided by 2 root 2 pi y I get e to the power mu root y plus e to the power minus mu root y. If we consider the expansion of e to the power mu root y and e to the power minus root y minus mu root y. So, this becomes simply e to the power minus y by 2 minus mu square by 2 divided by here alternative terms will be plus and minus. So, they will get cancelled out and the even terms will get added up and if you add then you will get 2 times. So, this 2 will go away I will get divided by root 2 pi y sigma mu root y to the power 2 k divided by 2 k factorial k equal to 0 to infinity. Now, let us substitute here say mu square by 2 is equal to say lambda then this will become e to the power minus lambda minus y by 2 divided by root 2 pi y sigma lambda to the power k 2 to the power k y to the power k by 2 k factorial. I multiply and divide by k factorial here. So, let us simplify this here this will become equal to I combine the terms in a particular way e to the power minus lambda lambda to the power k by k factorial 1 by 2 to the power 2 k plus 1 by 2 gamma 2 k plus 1 by 2 e to the power minus y by 2 y to the power 2 k plus 1 by 2 minus 1. So, I have combined all the terms in a very particular way let us see how it is coming. So, e to the power minus lambda lambda to the power k by k factorial I am writing here then there is another term that is 2 k factorial and then there will be a k factorial here. So, here I can actually cancel the terms like here I will get 2 k. So, I will cancel with the first term here then I will get 2 k minus 2 that I cancel with k minus 1 and so on. Now, what is remaining is 2 k minus 1, 2 k minus 2 and so on uh, 2 k minus 3 and so on. So, that terms I combine and it can be written as a gamma 2 k plus 1 by 2 because there is a divided by 2 term coming here. Now, the terms which I left here that is for example, 2 k. So, there was a 2 here then there was another 2 in the 2 k minus 2 and so on that will be again coming here and then there is a square root 2 here. So, that I put together as 2 to the power k plus half. Then there is a e to the power minus y by 2 term that I write here and the power of y to the power 2 k by 2 and then here we have minus half here. So, that I write as half minus 1. So, this particular way of writing down this gives it an interpretation that it is equal to sigma e to the power minus lambda lambda to the power k by k factorial f of 
1 plus 2 k y, where this f m y denotes the density of chi square m distribution. So, the interpretation for the density function of a y which is equal to x square, here y is equal to x square and the interpretation for the density of that is, it is a weighted because these are Poisson weights of central chi square. So, this is the pdf of non central chi square on 1 degree of freedom and the non centrality parameter lambda, lambda is actually mu square by this is a weighted pdf and the weights are actually the poisson weights here so now let us consider x to be np mu i that means i am considering p components so, x 1, x 2, x p are independent normals with means mu 1, mu 2, mu p and variances are unity and they are independent and in general I am assuming mu to be non-zero because at 0 this will simply give me chi square, central chi square. So, now I am looking at y is equal to x prime x that is sigma x i square i is equal to 1 to p. So, then this has non central chi square with p degrees of freedom and non centrality parameter lambda that is half mu prime mu that is sigma mu i square by 2. Let us look at this. Let us define gamma to be an orthogonal matrix with first row as say mu prime by norm of mu and other rows or orthogonal to it. That is I am writing gamma is equal to something like mu prime by norm of mu and other rows these are orthogonal ok, orthogonal to first row. Let us consider say z equal to gamma x then z will follow n p gamma mu i, but what is gamma mu? Gamma mu is equal to because this is mu, so mu prime mu you will get, so that is norm of mu square, so you will get norm of mu and other terms will become 0 because the other rows are orthogonal to the first row. So, if I consider x prime x that is equal to z prime gamma gamma prime z that is equal to z prime z because gamma is orthogonal that is equal to simply sigma z i square. So, if I consider the first component that is z is equal to z 1, z 2, z p then z 1 square will follow chi square 1 lambda, 
that is non central chi square distribution with 1 degree of freedom and lambda as the non centrality parameter. See this we will write as chi square p lambda and this one we are writing as chi square 1 lambda. Sometimes we write it as chi square 1 lambda like this also that is chi square p lambda. So, these are various uh, forms of this notation here. So, z 1 square is chi square 1 lambda and what you are getting is z prime z that is equal to z 1 square plus z 2 square plus z k square. So, these are central chi square. So, what you are getting chi square 1 plus 2 k where k is Poisson lambda plus chi square 1 plus chi square 1 these are central and these are all independent. So, we conclude that z prime z follows chi square p plus 2 k that is p d f of say v or say w is equal to z prime z that will be equal to e to the power minus lambda lambda to the power k by k factorial f of p plus 2 k y for k equal to 0 to infinity. Uh, we can look at some elementary properties. For example, uh, we have written actually y is equal to x prime x. Now, x prime x is equal to z prime z. So, this is actually y, the density of y. So, if we consider expectation of y, we can write it as expectation of expectation y given k that is equal to expectation of p plus 2 k because for a chi square distribution if k is given then it becomes central and it is equal to the number of degrees of freedom that is equal to p plus 2 expectation of k that is equal to p plus 2 lambda that is equal to p plus norm of mu square. We can also consider the characteristic function of y that is equal to psi y of t that is expectation of e to the power i t y. So, that is equal to expectation of expectation e to the power i t y given k. So, that is equal to given k it is a chi square. So, we know it it is equal to expectation of 1 minus 2 i t to the power minus p plus 2 k by 2. Now, to consider the expectation of this with respect to k, we consider the k following Poisson lambda here. So, it is equal to 1 minus 2 i t to the power minus p by 2 expectation of 1 minus 2 i t to the power minus k that is equal to 1 minus 2 i t to the power minus p by 2 because k is following Poisson lambda. Now, this term can be combined with this. So, you get it as simply 1 minus 2 i t to the power minus p by 2 sigma e to the power minus lambda by k factorial lambda by 1 minus 2 i t to the power k. So, you get that is equal to 1 minus 2 i t to the power minus p by 2 e to the power lambda by 1 minus 2 i t e to the power minus lambda. So, after compile, combining the terms
now once we are able to determine the characteristic function of the non central chi square distribution other characteristics like its variance and other things can also be found out easily so i am leaving this discussion at this point uh, now if you remember the definition of uh, t distribution the definition of a f distribution we had made use of the chi square so now if that chi square is replaced by a non central chi square the similar changes will occur so let me define non central f so let say w1 follow chi square p lambda and w2 follow chi square say q and w1 and w2 be independent then w1 by p divided by w2 by m is said to have a non central f with say so this is q here with p and q degrees of freedom and non centrality parameter lambda now there can be a possibility that the denominator chi square is also non central so we call it doubly non central say w1 follows chi square p lambda and w2 follows chi square q tau so in that case if we consider w1 by p divided by w2 by q then this is called doubly non central f of course they should be independent we can also define x following normal mu 1 and say w follows chi square n then if i consider x divided by root w by n then this is called non central t so these are some of the distributions that are used in the when we deal with the general multivariate normal distribution and uh, these quantities will be appearing Uh, in the distributions of the test statistics which we use for constructing uh, the test for the parameters of a multivariate normal distribution or for constructing the uh, confidence intervals etc now in the case of univariate normal distribution we had that x1 x2 xn if they are Uh, it is a random sample and if we consider the sample variance sigma x i minus x bar was square divided by n minus 1 and we called it s square we had obtained the distribution of that that is n minus 1 s square by sigma square it follows chi square distribution on n minus 1 degrees of freedom now what could be a possible generalization of this to multi dimension because in the multi dimension for uh, variance covariance matrix sigma we are getting the sample variance covariance matrix s so we are considering s divided by n minus 1 as the unbiased estimator so what could be the distribution of that so we need the concept of a matrix distribution so in the next lecture i would be uh, covering this matrix distribution for this let us look at one or two applications of the sampling from multivariate distributions suppose i am considering say x1 x2 x3 so these are considered as uh, sweat rate x2 is considered as the 
sodium content x3 is considered as the potassium constant so this is data on 20 items so it is assumed that x1 x2 x3 this is having n3 distribution with say mu and sigma and the data is calculated uh, data is observed in the following fashion for item number 1 so for each uh, item we are writing down the values of uh, x1 x2 x3 so it is 3.7 48.5 9.3 for the second item it is 5.7 65.1 like that up to 20 we are having for 20th item 5.5 40.9 9.4 9 so if we want say maximum likelihood estimators of mu and sigma then here we can consider mean vector sample mean vector we can consider here sigma say x 1 i i is equal to 1 to n 1 by n so 1 by 20 here 1 by 20 sigma x 2 i 1 by 20 sigma x 3 i etcetera. So, this will give the MLE of mu for calculation of the MLE of sigma then I need to consider 1 by 19 uh, 1 by 20 sigma x 1 i minus x 1 bar square 1 by 20 sigma x 2 i minus x 2 bar square 1 by 20 sigma x 3 i minus x 3 bar square we also need to calculate the cross product terms like 1 by 20 sigma x 1 i minus x 1 bar into x 2 i minus x 2 bar 1 by 20 sigma x 1 i minus x 1 bar into x 2 i minus x 2 x 3 i minus x 3 bar 1 by 20 sigma x 2 i minus x 2 bar into x 3 i minus x 3 bar. For calculation purpose the simplifications can be done for example, one may use uh, like 1 by 20 sigma x 1 say x 1 i square minus 20 x 1 bar square. So, this will get cancelled out and similarly for the cross product terms we may consider 1 by 20 sigma x 1 i x 2 i minus x 1 bar x 2 bar etcetera. So, one may consider these quantities also for simplification. I end up with uh, some exercise let us consider say x following n 5 mu sigma and I define mu as the 2 4 minus 1 3 0 and sigma matrix as 4 minus 1 half half 0 minus 1 3 1 minus 1 0 half 1 6 1 minus 1 0 uh, sorry minus half minus 1 1 4 0 0 0 minus 1 0 2. So, this is a 5 by 5 matrix let us consider say x is equal to x 1 and x 2 where x 1 I am taking to be x 1 x 2 
and x2 I am taking to be x3, x4, x5. So, find conditional distributions of say x1 given x2 is equal to say 0, 2, minus 1 and x2 given say x1 equal to 1, 5. Let us also take a is equal to say 1 minus 1, 1, 1 and b is equal to say 1, 1, 1, 1, 1 minus 2. Find the distributions of a x 1, b x 2, covariance between a x 1, b x 2, also find p that is 2 by 2 matrix and q 3 by 3 such that p x 1 and q x 2 are independently distributed. So, I am leaving it as an exercise you can try. So, in the next lecture I will consider a matrix distribution for the sample dispersion matrix S. So, it is called Vishar distribution and in the next lecture I will introduce this thing.